Hello my friends and welcome back to the channel. Greets for you who are first time join us and thanks for watching the video and it's this is our sector and I apologize for the little bit of frame freezes. Um, well now it seems to work alright. Um, many of you might not know this game. It was previously known as Starfarer, but then they changed the name to Star Sector. And I think two years ago, or around two years ago, it came out, or it was first kickstarted and then Steam greenlit, I think. And I think it's a interesting game and features a very interesting game mechanic. Um. Well, I'll do a mission, and as you see, I've done a couple of missions, like this one here, where you have to um, yeah, where you have to protect your own fleet against incoming invaders. And that's not easy, but the setup I've chosen. I hardly ever use these. The setup I've chosen is very damage heavy. In support, it also has a good support. Um, I haven't beaten the last hurrah. I haven't tried it yet. What I have beaten before is Forlorn Hope. But that's a tough one. And you get to fly the toughest ship of the game. That thing that TTS Invincible. It's some sort of seal clubbing machine. Honestly, if you pit this against an equally sized ship, this thing cannot lose if you equip it correctly. The problem is if you f yeah, face so many attackers. Into the equipment loadout I've chosen and also what kind how the game works and what it, what the combat mechanics are. And um, this is a very energy heavy loadout. Blue circus like this one means I can fit energy. Um, as you can see it tells you mount is medium energy, primary medium yeah, I have a medium thing installed. Well, mount is energy, I have a medium energy thingy mounted. And it has 10 ordnance points. Ordnance points are here in the top right of the screen. For some reason I haven't maxed up my ordnance points. Well. Okay. Well. Whatever the f- whatever it is, it, is, it was. Well, let's drop down a few ordnance points. Because then I can show you some stuff. They have basically different sized mounts, and this is a large energy mount, and I could mount a plasma cannon. And you see, it has stats. It has a DPS, it has a range, um, uh, it generates flux, the accuracy is very very good, and the turn rate is slow. Um, and also, you can see the damage type is energy, which energy is an all-round damage. Um, what I had previously mounted on here is a graviton beam and you see the damage type is kinetic which deals 200% damage to shields and 50% damage to armor. So double damage to shields, half damage to armor. This here is a point defense laser. The role is to get any missiles that come in close. Um, you see here I have I have four graviton beams that are facing forward and another two that are potentially able to face forwards. I have two plasma cannons which ha have the, d the damage type the energy. Um, energy does 100% damage to shields, 100% damage to armor and therefore it's an all-rounder. Um, the higher your flux on the ship gets the more energy well, um, uh, another way around. 
the more maxed out your ship flux becomes, the more damage percentage you get as a bonus. I think you can get up to 150% damage at maximum flux, but running on maximum flux is dangerous because if your flux is maxed out and goes over your flux capacity, you're a sitting duck because you're overloaded. I think it takes about 10 seconds for the overload to dissipate and then you're still having a near full flux capacity and for 10 seconds everybody can unload into you. Um, you could fit missiles but honestly it's not worth it. They cost you 5 points or so and honestly I can invest these points much, these points much better here in graviton beams. By the way graviton beams are the flux are the most flux efficient weapon against shields because they have a, a DPS of 100 and generate 75 flux a second which means you're dealing 200 damage to the enemy shield but only overload yourself with 75 flux. This is why I have uh, this amount of graviton beams. And plasma cannons, once the shields are down, their, their, their DPS is so high that honestly one or two plasma cannons are enough t to destroy an enemy ship. Honestly. I, this here is a universal mount. If I take this down, see? Medium universal turret empty. Um, I could fit all sorts of stuff here, for example high explosive. But high explosive and fragmentation only deals 25%... Fragmentation deals 50% to shields. And damage based on the armor value of a ship, so lightly armored targets are ripped apart by fragmentation and high explosive deals 100% to armor, to HP, but only 25% or 50% to shield, so it's garbage. Um, I could fit missiles here. They have different kinds of stats, but honestly, the only thing worth on this design because I've face so many ships are graviton beams. Um, as you see vents increase your flux dissipation. You can fit more flux capacitors but I have my ordnance points maxed out. Here you can see your top speed and I've and you can fit augmentations. I fitted a integrated targeting unit which increases my range by 50% because I'm a capital ship or battleship which means my range is huge um, uh, the, I hope I'm not telling the wrong thing integrated targeting unit what's the ensemble injector yeah by 50% which is huge I fit hardened shields which decrease the amount of shield flux by 25%. I've stabilized shields, which reduces my upkeep by 50%. And the unstable injector. Shields, if, you if your shields take damage, they generate flux. If you fire your weapons, you generate flux. So, because the ship already has a very low shield flux damage coefficient, um, 0.6 is the normal. It's 0.45 because I have the hardened shields fit. You, you pretty much are removing fortress. And lastly, my top speed is very slow. This is why I fit the unstable injector to become faster. But I think that's enough rambling right now. Um, anyways, on what's to battle? Um, it took me three rounds to beat the scenario again, so I'll edit the first few rounds, and let's just say in the first round um, I beat the capital ship and then I got a little bit too overconfident, and yeah, that was my end. In the second round uh, I was too cautious, and that was my end there, but you'll see, or rather future me will tell me in the future me will tell you let's say 
So you see the first wave of attack incoming. These are hound frigates. They have no shields, and there's an interruption. Um, and lastly, you pretty easily destroy them. The annoying thing is they're very mobile, so hitting them with my actual plasma cannons isn't the easiest thing. And you see me checking the map, checking for incoming ships, and then move up accordingly. And I pretty much dispose of the Hound Frigates, as I should. There are my burst lasers working to get guard against the incoming missiles, and it worked pretty much alright. And the blue beams are the graviton beams, and these are cruisers, not frigates anymore. But I am a battleship, not a battle cruiser. So I pretty much make relatively light work of of these things as well. There's a battle cruiser in front of us, and I pretty much. At this point, yes, I'm overloading because I didn't then flux accordingly, and and I'm taking a beating and not looking after my health enough, and this pretty much seals our fate. Now I'm venting, um, and you see our flux rapidly dissipates, and our armor has taken a beating. Um, as you can see in the bottom left corner, there's our ship icon. There's a chunk of armor missing already. But I'm still holding my own. Right around now comes the enemy capital ship. As you see, uh, the annoying red pulse cannons come in. Um, luckily, they I don't think they make hard flux, but it's a little bit hard to see. Oh no, they do make hard flux. Um, and right now I'm trying to get away from the ship because... Um, yeah. Although, to not be rained to death by it. Um, hard flux is created by projectile weapons that impact the shields and cannot be dissipated as long as the shields are up. Soft flux is generated by beam weapons hitting the shield and can be dissipated by when the shields are up. There I went flux because I don't want to overload, which is a shorter time than overloading and having to end flux. And thusly, I take lower damage to the armor. Um, I'm making a few mistakes in this scene, in this scene, but I managed to. Well, after I dispose of the two cruisers and the battle cruiser, I make light work of the frigate, and this is pretty much the end of this battle of this cruiser. And this should be the end of the other cruiser. And no, okay, so it's not the end. And oh yeah, the next wave of thermal pulse cannon projectiles is coming in, and I'm greeting it with a similar wave of plasma cannon projectiles, and my flux is almost maxed out, so I can't really shoot anymore. Um, though my front armor still looks quite good. Uh, there is another ship coming in. I think I'm going to retreat now, as to... Yep, there it is, to vent my flux. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, no, I don't retreat. Interesting, I thought I retreated. Okay, and after... Oh yeah. I dis I dispose of the battle cruiser size chip, and I have to say these graviton beams really. If you don't have your shields up, they amount in damage so hard. And if you have your shields up, your flux is pretty much maxed out. So these are suppressive fire, you might let's say. And I think now I dispose of the capital ship. Yep. Okay, there's another frigate coming in, which is annoying. Um, yeah, I check the map and I see... Oh, there's almost hardly anything left. This is my chance. Uh, where was I? Oh, yeah. Um, 
if you have your shields up, your flux is maxed out, and I can pretty much easily destroy you, and if not, uh, well, I'll destroy you anyways. So, being rained upon by graviton beams isn't the most fortunate of fates. And here I deliberately let my armor take the beating to... and get my flux up to dispose of that ship. Raise your shields for planes, because otherwise you're going to die of the backblast. Ooh. Whew! That was a close one. To get the shields up right in time. Checking map. Okay. Not much is left. Let's go forwards and kill off the rest. For planes thought. But fate does not really smile upon the fortunate, does it? Uh, or how it's called. So I foolishly go forwards. And that pretty much seals my fates. I have a minute left or so from now on. Uh, that pretty much gets surrounded by frigates. My health isn't the best either. I foolishly drop... No, not foolishly. Drop my shields and bend the flux. And now it takes ages for the shields to get back up. And I take a pounding. And miss all the frigates. I should. What I should have done is turned around and went along the side of the map as to make them fly behind me, because the AI is so stupid, and then I could have easily picked them off by... Um, use by just discharging my graviton, be graviton beams. My plasma cannons into them, which I miss, and each time I miss, I amount 3600 flux, and flux gets up, and all the kinetic and other weapons impact my shields, which overloads my flux, and this pretty much seals the fate of this attempt. Oh yes, flux is almost up. I don't really have targets to pick off. Have to back now having to vent flux, and... There goes my health. And that was it. So, let's check the battle results, and onwards we go. So, onwards with attempt number two. And attempt number two starts me off in a nebula. In nebulas prevent zero flux engine boost, which means until I got out of the nebula, I'm a sitting duck, and therefore I wasn't able to maneuver into position correctly before being caught out by the enemy. And thusly, this and an er a fatal misdecision of not engaging the capital ship and finishing it off as I had the chance seal my fate in this battle. Goodbye, Hound Frigate. Was nice knowing you. Um, here you see the first wave of attack coming in. I don't know how much of this I'll have edited. I hope quite a bit. Anyways, the secret to beating this is... Um, drawing out the battle, which means you move and maneuver around in a way which lets which prolongs each individual individual engagement before until the next um, fleet not fleet um, to the next wave comes in so you have more time to finish them off by moving across sidely and I move for correct. I finish off the ships. Boom. And it doesn't look too bad, actually. But I'm going upwards instead of sidewards. And that means... Around about now... 
the capital ship should be coming in. Let's just go around. Ah, there it is. Finally. And there you see, I have to vent. Which means all my graviton beams, forward beams, are disabled. And I'm unable to save most of my firepower. And my frontal armor. Which means that until my graviton beams are up, I'm pretty much a sitting duck. And there I get disturbed by somebody. Anyways, let's go on. Try and dispose of the slasher frigate. And... Didn't fail to do so. That thing pretty much retreated. There's another frigate and two cruisers. There was this cruiser and the other cruiser pretty much got annihilated by the backblast of the, this, the ship. And there my graviton beams and burst lasers were here. Work the capital ship incoming missiles and thermal, well, not thermal pulse cannon because they are out of range. And what sees my fate in this battle is that for the entire battle I pretty much can't get the map empty enough to take care of the enemy capital ship. And I repeatedly lose a bunch of my weapons and don't look after my HP enough. Together with the misplacement of my ship on the map by not being able to fly to the fitting spot of the map, that pretty much seals my fate completely. And I boom, blow up. Well, onwards with space ballerinas or giant battleships in space with slow motion battles. Um, I'll skip the next mm, s few minutes of battle, or rather I go to four times speed so you don't have to watch all the things. And the extra slow motion dancing in space till we get till it's time to take care of the capital ship of our enemy fleet. And as you see, I finally managed to isolate the enemy capital ship. And as I told you, the DTS Invincible pretty much makes light work of everything you can face in a one-on-one -on -one situation or something that gets close to a one-on-one. -on -one. I'm sorry, folks. And so you pretty much, I pretty much disposed of it relatively easily. It just goes boom. 
it's uh, sometimes unfair how much better that ship is than any than other ships. Well, after disposing of the capital ship, the only thing that was left was to clean up, <coughs> which can take a bit in a ship that only has a top speed of 50, whereas other ships have a top speed of 180. Nah, no, 130 plus 50, but it still can take a while. So, have fun watching the cleanup, I'll put some fancy music on it, and for the thumbs up at the, f at the finish, yeah, I'll join you again. Till then! Well, I'd say this was a pretty successful run. Um, I beat my previous score of 37% up to 47%. All in all, I'm very satisfied. And to my surprise, at the end of the battle, I still have a relatively good amount of health left, so I, I made this thing took a beating like a boss. And yeah. So, what do you think of the scenarios and star sector? It's an interesting game. Um, I don't know how it costs, how much it costs at the moment. Um, I wouldn't buy it again because I. <laughs> it's not like you accomplish anything by playing it, other than playing it. Not like a space program or other games where you accomplish feats of science or other things. But it still is a fun little game, and once in a while, I just play to have some stress relief. <laughs> Anyways, folks, thanks for watching. Um, <sighs> I, sh I don't really know what to say anymore. Um, I should apologize for not having content, uh, having had content out for such a long time. I'm currently busy with producing a Kerber Space program short movie. It seems to become right now. Um, I don't know when this will get out. And also my life is relatively busy and on the change right now. So I think you'll have to stick with the fact that <sighs> you probably won't see much content on this channel for a while. I'll ask you to bear with it. And I thank you in advance for doing so. Bye.